Well, thanks, Manuel. So, Josh Putman recently joined Noblehurst Farm as the crop manager and was introduced to all this yield data. So, Josh, why don't you tell us what it means to capture this yield data and how you're going to use it for Noblehurst Farm? Yeah, I thank all the presenters and especially Manuel for uh, cleaning our yield data this year. Um, as Jody said, my name is Josh. Uh, I work here at Noblehurst with the entire farm team. Uh, we are roughly a 1,600 cow dairy. Uh, we work about 4,500 acres, depending on the year. We are a corn silage as well as corn grain, uh, alfalfa and triticale in rotation. Um, we put our manure out through drag line as well as tanker spread. Um, we have a 50 cow rotary. Uh, where the cows are milked every day and on the crop side of things you know we were trying to utilize the yield data cleaning in a way that we could see variability across our fields because being a dairy farm we have a lot of different things that can affect us we've got compaction issues so like in a given wet year where we have to dump cart things um, that can cause a lot of compaction issues so we try to do our best uh, to do kind of reduced till type planting. We do strip tilling with us, and then we have a 16 row corn planter. We're um, also looking at possibly getting uh, our own sprayer so that we can better manage our crops with more timely applications, especially when it comes to uh, certain pests like alfalfa weevil uh, and those kinds of things. Um, but we really wanted to see just how much variability we had in our fields. So we had Manuel, these are actually uh, examples of a few of our fields here. Um, but you can see that we have some fields that are in that Q1 zone, which is your green zone or your high yielding, low variability type fields. We then have some fields that in a given year might have or be in that uh, Q2 zone where it's high yielding, but the variability might be there. But then we also have on the lower end possibly some fields that are consistently low yielding. Uh, I believe we provided five years worth of data to the Nutrient Management SPEAR program. And as long as we had three years of uh, yield data on those fields, we were able to get these maps. So we met with Manuel via Zoom the other day and went over these zones. And we could actually see certain things like tile lines or old ditch lines or uh, old hedgerows in our fields where we might have some variability. But other fields we're actually looking to utilize um, by, okay, what's going on in that spot of the field? Do we maybe need some drainage tile or is it possibly a little low on some fertility aspects, whether potash or phosphorus? So we're really gonna kind of hone in on some of these areas, whether they be wet spots or those types of things. And another thing, you know, if we've got those consistently hot or low variability, low yielding fields, the Q4s, you know, we might be able to um, better place our, say, corn hybrids. So we do purchase some EconoBlend uh, corn hybrids, but then we also purchase the high end uh, triple stack and smart stack type corn varieties for the farm for corn fields that have been corn on corn for say five years. Um, but we do also utilize the Econo blend just to try to cut some costs here and there. And so are we gonna put our biggest, best, baddest hybrid out on that Q4 field, or are we gonna put the big bad one on our Q1 and then utilize the EBs on say these Q4s? And so as, as kind of helping with the crops and, and everybody here on the team, I'm going to really try to hone in on some of these fields where maybe we can do a little bit better job with some of our management practices and just overall maybe help to increase yields uh, provided the weather holds off for us. It was a little tough here this year. Our crops don't look too bad overall. Um, we're anticipating hopefully 17, 18 ton corn silage. Uh, we're actually getting ready to start fourth cutting, which came back very nicely. Our third was a little light. Um, but fourth cutting does look really good. So that's just kind of one example. We're gonna really kind of hone in on the fertility and possibly lime, as well as where we place some of our corn hybrids uh, in the future. Josh, can you speak to how you're gonna do some on-farm research in the future using these tactics? Yeah, so I believe it was presented earlier where we can put out single type strips in certain fields. And if we can hone in on what the actual, if we're a little bit more fertility, let's say, we might be able to 
do some test strips because we have the 16 row corn planter with the eight row corn chopper and we also just purchased an eight row corn grain head we can you know do single randomized strips across certain fields um, we have everything from 120 foot strips to 120 acre fields so you know on some of them bigger fields we'll really be able to put out some replicated um, call it randomized uh, as Matt Paul would say uh, types of experiments and then we can possibly see it on the yield monitor if we saw any of those differences. So we're looking forward to continuing to do the research here on the farm and, and going forward. We're, you know, look, we're excited to be able to do everything in-house and work with, the, with Cornell University and the Nutrient Management Sphere program and everybody that's a part of that program and all the hard work that they put in because I saw how tedious it was to clean yield data and I can promise you I'm glad I'm a farmer. <laughs> Uh, we really appreciate the collaboration here and we appreciate everybody coming out. Thank yeah. you so much and uh, enjoy the rest of your day. Yeah, thanks everyone.